All right, we're going to talk about reflections uh, here. So a reflection um, is a transformation. So it's a, a movement of, um, it's also a rigid motion, meaning that it, um, it can be done by, you know, cutting out a sheet of paper and moving the sheet of paper. Um, you, it doesn't change the shape or size because um, a reflection we know is, um, it doesn't, if we look at our reflection in the mirror, it doesn't get any bigger, right? Um, it kind of stays the same size, right? So a, um, it's a transformation that flips a figure over a line of reflection. So we can see that happening here. We have this triangle and it's being flipped over this dotted line right here. Okay. Um, also, you can think of a coin. Um, you know, if you reflect heads and you flip it over here, you get tails. And that's what they mean by orientation. So orientation is how someone something's positioned in space. But um, for us, orientation for uh, um, a reflection changes the orientation. Uh, and that's because it's a flip, right? It, it makes the top side, it makes the top side go down and the bottom side come up. Um, and it does not change the size or the shape. Um, and therefore it does make a rigid motion. And another way you can see orientation in a figure like this is notice how this goes A, B, C, and see how it's counterclockwise, the it, alphabetical. But if you do it for this one that got flipped, it actually goes clockwise um, around in alphabetical order. So that's another way to talk about orientation um, is the how the capital letters, the points um, change in order when you flip. And this R right here stands for reflect. And the little M is the line of reflection. Okay. So this is basically saying that if you apply a reflection to this shape, you get this shape. So this is the, this is the uh, image. Okay. So first, let's just Try and just do some observation about reflections that happen over the x and y axis. So here, how far is a from the x axis? Well, it's two, right? And how far is d from the x axis? Also two. And that equality should be preserved for all the points, right? B is six away and so is e. And C is 4 away from the x-axis, and so is F. So how are these related? Well, each corresponding point on the pre-image and the image are... Um, equidistant, so talk about what that means in a second, from the x-axis. So equidistant is used a lot in geometry. Equidistant means that they're equal distance apart. Um, so it's talking about how A and D are both two away from the x-axis. And, that, and that's what's characteristic of reflections. Um, and the rule here is if you look at the points, like this A is what, negative six, two, and this is that negative six, negative two. So X, the negative six part stays the same. And the Y, becomes um, negative y. So the coordinate rule for this is if you have a point and you reflect it over the x-axis, the x stays the same, but the y, um, you have to change its sign. Let's see what changes when we do the 
the y-axis. So if we look at A here, it's 4 away, and so is D from the y-axis. And B is 6 away. And C and F are both 2 away. So we could say that the corresponding points are equidistant from the y-axis this time. And if we look at a particular point like A, negative 4, negative 6, it becomes 4, uh, negative 6. By the way, I know that A goes to D because that's what they're both listed first uh, in the transformation, the statement. Okay, so Y stays the same. But X, we see that the negative 4 here became a 4. So X changes sign. So this means that X, Y, the Y stays the same, but the X changes sign. So when we're working in the Y axis, or trying to reflect over the Y axis, you can use this shortcut. Now normally we can visually do it and, and just count and just equally space it ourselves, but this is a good way to rotate just one or two points. Um, so all that notation just means to flip over the y-axis. Remember, the big capital R means to reflect. And for the x-axis, the x stays the same, but the y gets flipped. Okay, so we'll look at some examples of that um, here in a moment. Um, in fact, those are just my two PR examples. Um, we could also reflect over this line, y equals x. Um, so let's, let's write down the, uh, the coordinates of all the points and try and make some sort of pattern out of this. So I'm just going to jot these down for you. Those are um, these three. And they get moved. Um, and they kind of get moved in this way, right? How do I know that? Well, I know that B goes to E because they're both in the middle. You see? C goes to F because they're at the end. Okay? So, the same, the same relation, right? The corresponding points on the image and pre-image are equidistant from the line y equals x. Also, if you look at these numbers a little bit, like look at b and, and e, how are those points related? Well, they actually just get swapped. So x becomes y. And y becomes x. So what that means is that the rule for this is just to flip the two. So if you reflect y equals, no, if you reflect the point x comma y across the line y equals x, basically those two those two numbers switch just like how the negative six and then and then the five switch locations, right? Um, and for this one, so the, yeah, this is the flip over the line y equals x, and this one is a flip over the line uh, y equals negative x. 
And if you're wondering, well, like, how does that work? Like, what is this here? Um, well, it's the same thing, but it just has negatives on each one. And you might be wondering, well, why? Why is it on one, not the other? Like, I don't understand. Um, think of it this way. If, if we're truly flipping them, right? Should, and because it, you can see here that, that y becomes x and x becomes y, right? But if you throw the negative in there, this negative right here, it should say that y should go to negative x and x should go to negative y, right? Because they're opposites each other. Y and x are opposite. Um, that's a little bit of that. So all of that, what we just did is actually summarized in a table at the bottom of the homework here for you. Um, okay. So let's go through these questions real quick. So we're not going to reflect entire triangles because uh, that might take time. Um, we're just going to do line segments. So if we have A, B here, and we want to reflect it over this line, which is Y equals negative X, it's a line with a slope of negative one that goes through the origin. Okay, how would that look? Well, it's kind of hard to say if you don't have the original points uh, written down because the reflection rule says that we should flip X and Y and change the signs on both. So I'm gonna switch these two so I get two and zero, but change the sign on both. Flip the two, but change the sign on both. Okay, so we can plot those in red. And we can kind of see that if you tilt your head, it's kind of like you could fold it on that dotted line and they would match up. Okay. Negative 1, 5, 3, 0. And this one we have reflecting over this. Y equals X. So V is going to go to V prime and W is going to go to W prime. And for this, we just, we just switch the, uh, the points. So we go five, negative one and zero three. Okay. So five, negative one and zero three. Okay. Notice too, when you have it, when your your pre-image crosses the line, um, you get an intersection point there, right? Because if you're at the reflection point or reflection line and you're reflected, you stay in the same spot because you're at the line of reflection. Okay. Describe a reflection that uh, results in um, triangle three. Well... If we want to get this right here, we could take this one and reflect it down. So if we reflect triangle one over M, we should get triangle three. And if we want to get four, I think the easiest way to do that would be to reflect triangle two over line K. So that's just practicing using the notation. Okay. Um, and remember at the beginning we talked about a reflection, um, they're, they're the same, the points, like the A and the A prime are the same distance from the reflection line. So if we count one, two, three, four, five, six, if we just go to the point three and three, that's where the reflection happens. 
and this is one, two, three, four, four, and four. You see? So, where is this line? Well, it's at negative two. So it's y equals negative two. So if we reflect line segment AB, that should be A prime B prime. So reflect line segment AB over the line y equals negative two. A um, couple more here, almost done. So a negative one, three is V and W is four, zero. Let's put that back to black. Um, this one actually wants us to, it's, we're going um, kind of off script here. It wants us to do Y equals three. So we're just gonna use the picture here to give us, to help us. Um, so, as I told you before, if you reflect something, but you're always starting on the line of reflection, you stay in the same spot. But this W is one, two, three away, so it should be one, two, three away up here. So it's also V prime, like that. So V equals V prime, which is negative one, three. But W, which was four, zero, now is at W prime, which is at four, six. Okay. Um, same thing here. Let's go there and there. A very small segment, C and D. And it wants us to reflect across this line right here. Okay. So when the lines are, are a vertical or horizontal, you can tip you can you can do it by just counting how many blocks you are away from the reflection line and just and just plot it that way. Um, we don't have to rely on these that much like these two aren't as critical because we can just we can just visualize it with the picture but these are a little bit more tricky so those are really important to know um okay so how far away are we well we got one two so i want to go one two and then c is one two three four one two three four so it looks like this is our image where C prime is at five, yeah, five, two, and D prime is at three, one.